Hello, I want to welcome you to the very first recording from Radio Linseed, broadcasting to you in pictures from the depth of the Sussex countryside. So I'm going to talk to you about my journey through Linseed. I'm going to explain how Linseed was in your life in a whole series of little uh, broadcasts like this and uh, hopefully that will help to improve all our health and so on. Anyway, my name is Derwin Banks. <clears throat> I'm a farmer. I grow linseed and press it into oil for sale directly to people so you can have a farm, farm fresh linseed. But prim primarily, although I have to sell my products, this is not primarily a selling operation. It's really just in information about linseed and how you can use it and so on. And my later broadcasts will talk to you about the oils and fats and so on. Some of you may remember Victory V's and on the front of Victory V's it was written linseed, licorice and chloridine and you can't get those today like they are because chloridine was the derivative of opium so there'd be someone around the corner melting out the opium, I'm sure. So you can't get the victory release, but that was one way that uh, linseed was, was in our lives. So I've been producing linseed for about 12 years. When I started, I was aware that linseed was good for animals. Uh, so that's how I started. I had a press and I pressed five litre cans of oil, took it around, knocked on people's doors who had stables and so on and uh, eventually I was able to get merchants to sell my product in the south. Uh, but gradually I learnt much more about omega-3s and their role in regulating the hormones in the body and the fact that they are essential fats uh, that we need to keep us well. So the, the very beginnings of linseed sprung out of my experience with feeding the linseed cattle and how I knew that was helpful for them. But it has been a real journey of understanding and learning about oils and fats and the harm that having the wrong balance of oils and fats can do, do to the body. And linseed, from that point of view, has entirely changed my life. I now spend a great deal of time giving talks to groups and organisations and I take around quite a number of other little artefacts and so on from my museum collection uh, all to do with linseed and flax and here in fact is a linseed press that was exhibited at the Great Exhibition in 1851 it's a huge thing driven by steam with two great big rollers one went one way round and one the other way round and then they went in a saucer shaped thing and the final pressing phase was to the left there and that was a hydraulic press and that press made the slabs of oil cake that used to come to the farms that I remember in my very young days that we crushed up and fed to the cattle. So how you feed your animals is vitally important as well and when animals were grazing over largely older pasture like organic ones or wild animals uh, they make omega-3 in their body, like fish make omega-3 from plankton and so on. Animals do the same thing. And then when the farmer was finally fattening up his animals for sale, um, the linseed oil cake helped to make sure that there was a better balance of fatty acids in the meat. And of course, whilst they were being fed to dairy cows, then milk would have been a better balance too for us. So quite a lot of things that's been happening in agriculture have veered away to the industrialization of food and food is much more important for us than that. So all these things I began to learn about linseed and I've been putting, it, uh, putting them into practice and telling people about them and people have been using my products and passing on my name and so on. But I have to say that in our early days on the farm, being a small mixed farm, it was very, very difficult. Uh, so uh, the journey I've been on with this has been quite difficult too. But as I said, the, 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 the um, 
changes that it's made to my life have, have been absolutely brilliant. Now, many of you may have seen linseed flowering. It's the most beautiful blue flower in the countryside, flowering in uh, mid to late June, sometimes into July. We plant the linseed at the end of March, the beginning of April, and we aim to harvest at the end of August and the beginning of September. So we want nice, fine spring weather for it to begin to grow and of course um, super sunshine for the harvesting period. It's quite difficult to cut uh, because it's a fibre plant like flax and um, you have to have a very sharp blade. But it can be harvested with a normal combine harvester. It can be kept in the barn for long periods as long as the moisture content is around 8%. And uh, I produce around about 100 tonnes every year, turn it into oil and also capsules for sale direct to you. My next video I will talk more about essential fats and how I learnt about them and how I describe them when I give my talks. So I hope you'll tune in and listen to the second broadcast from Lady Olin Seed. Thank you.